from Mike Lightfoot Court inside Gates Gymnasium inside the Wycamp Center. Bethel Pilot Basketball is on the air today. It's a top 20 showdown in the Crossroads League as number five Indiana Wesleyan comes calling on the 18th ranked Bethel Pilots. And how you doing everybody alongside Angelo DiCarlo, Chuck Freeby. Great to have you with us for another evening of Bethel Basketball on TV 46. But on both these teams coming off very difficult losses in their midweek games. Yeah, you don't expect a top 20 matchup to be both teams coming off losses, but that was certainly the case. A tough one for Bethel down at Huntington. They were down big for the majority of the game. Made a big comeback thanks to their bench, but couldn't come over the top in the end and lost by two. Meanwhile, no shame for Indiana Wesleyan losing to number one Grace, but when you're the number five ranked team in the country, you don't expect to lose by 28 points. They were kind of blown out on Wednesday night, so a tough one for them, and they are certainly in bounce back mode themselves. Especially the way this Indiana Wesleyan team mainly runs its offense because Greg Donegal's team can put points on the board and they're led by Javen Buchanan. Yeah, they love to score over 100 points per game because they, they've scored, done that five times. And Javen Buchanan, a 6'7 sophomore forward, averaging nearly 19 points per game and an Indiana All-Star in his high school days at Lafayette Jefferson. He's really the stir of the drink and he's still an improving player. He didn't start playing varsity basketball until he was a senior at high school at Lafayette Jefferson. So this guy is just getting better every single day. For Bethel, the offense runs through Drew Lutz. That was a bit of a problem Wednesday night because he had a bad shooting night, but that was on the road. Here in the White Camp Center, he normally shoots it very well. He does, and he was just three of 16 in that game, and but he averages 25 points per game, 4.1 assists per game, 6'1 senior guard out of Penn High School. Certainly they need him to play like Drew Lutz here today if they're gonna have an opportunity to win this top 20 showdown. Two teams jockeying for that number two position in the Crossroads League. It's Indiana, Wesleyan, and Bethel. We'll have the opening lineups and starting tip-off coming your way next on 46. Back inside the Wycamp Center, the starting lineups are being introduced. Here's Angelo DiCarlo. All right, Indiana Wesleyan, coached by Greg Tonical, is starting Noah Smith, a six-foot senior guard, averaging seven and a half points per game. Griffin Cleaver is a 6'3 junior guard, 15.3 points per game. Of note, scored a career-high 33 versus Bethel last year. Javen Buchanan, 6'7 sophomore four. We talked about him earlier, 19 points per game. Also, 6.3 rebounds per game. Nolan Mater, a 6'5 junior guard, 5.8 points per game. Nathan Childress, a 6'6 graduate student forward. An IU transfer, 14 and a half points per game to go along with 5.7 rebounds per game. How about for the Bethel Pilots, led by Coach Steve Draven in his fifth year. True Lutz leads the way at 6'1 senior guard. The Penn grad is a 2,000 point scorer. 25 points, four rebounds, four assists per game. James Anderson, a 6'8 senior forward, 10.7 points, 6.2 rebounds per game. Nathan Ertz, a 6'6 senior forward out of Alpo, 10.7 points, 4.6 rebounds per game. Trent Edwards, a 6'4 senior guard out of Northwood, 6.4 points per game. And Preston Phillips, a 6'8 graduate student forward out of Jimtown, 12.5 points, 7 rebounds per contest. So the starting lineups introduced, and we're just about ready for this top 20 showdown. Indiana Wesleyan and Bethel tangling for the 118th time in a series that dates all the way back to 1969. The Wildcats won the first meeting of the season back in Marion back in December by a count of 80 to 76. The officials for tonight, Kenny Ludlow working with Todd Morgan and Jeremy Swafford. Indiana Wesleyan in the road red with the black lettering and stripes. Bethel in their home whites with Bethel in blue letters and numbers. Good crowd on hand here at the Wycamp Center as the opening tip is controlled by the Pilots who come in with a record of 16 and five. They are seven and four overall in Crossroads League action. Preston Phillips, the young man out of Jimtown High School, handles it up top. That's Trent Edwards out of Northwood. 
Nathan Ertz, the Valparaiso native, with the right hand too strong. Good rebound by James Anderson. He'll kick it outside. The one guy who really hasn't had a touch in this sequence is Drew Lutz. He does now. Misfires on the three, and a rebounding foul is called on Indiana Wesleyan. Lutz had a good look there from the top of the key. Doesn't drop in. Trying to get him going early after that 3 of 16 performance in the two-point loss to Huntington on Wednesday. Nolan Mater called for the foul. And so this very lengthy opening possession for Bethel continues. And Lutz wins out another three. Just three out of his last 18 from the field. Meanwhile, the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats, 18 and three on the year, nine and two in the Crossroads League. Noah Smith handles the ball up top and drives on Ertz. Smith's little teardrop won't go, and the rebound to Preston Phillips. He had a big night on the boards Wednesday against Huntington. Lutz drives baseline. Down low to Anderson. Big fella, strong for two. That was a great pass inside by Ertz to get it to Anderson for the bucket. When Bethel's offense is really clicking, of course, like most teams these days, they'll be proficient from three-point range. But they don't mind getting twos, and Trent Edwards with the lay-in. A quick start for Bethel, almost imperative today. Here's Childress for three. That rims out, and Phillips collects another carom. Edwards changes hands and puts it over the big fella. And a 6 nothing start for the Pilots. Nolan Mater outside for Indiana Wesleyan. Here's Griffin Cleaver. Cleaver working on Trent Edwards. Childress for three, too strong. Rebound Lutz, Pilots want to go in transition. Phillips gives it back to Lutz. Driving down the lane, he went out of control and lost the ball a little bit in the Wildcats. One of the rare contact, but nothing called situations there. Much to the consternation of Steve Draven in front of the Bethel bench. Still 6 nothing Pilots. We've played over two and a half minutes. Coach Draven gained clarification from all three officials as they worked their ways down the, down the court. As to what they saw or didn't, didn't see, see in this case. <laughs> Bethel with some sticky defense here. That's Buchanan with the lay-in. And the 6'7 sophomore who averages 19 a game out of Lafayette Jefferson High School. And he's the reigning Crossroads League Player of the Week. Gets the Wildcats on the board. He showed his length there, be able to go with that high hand up to the high glass for the bucket. And that's a real big part of what makes him so difficult to defend. Lutz has to pop outside, shot clock at 10. You see it, right hand corner of the pilot scoreboard. And another turnover by Bethel. Here's Mater. And he threw it too low for Childress. Bethel will go to its bench quickly as Jameer Jefferson will check in and take the place of Trent Edwards. Jefferson has really been on a hot streak. You may have remember his game last Saturday against Goshen with a tremendous dunk and 11 points. He topped that on Wednesday night with 14 against Huntington. Yeah, him and Clay Hilliard were keys to the comeback for Bethel to get him back in it. They didn't ultimately win the game, but those two players off the bench were huge. Here's Griffin Cleaver. He lost control of the ball. Anderson with the steal. Pilots back on the run. Jefferson all the way, kicks it out to Ertz for three. Too strong, here comes Noah Smith the other way. And Lutz breaks up that pass. Now Indiana Wesleyan will go to its benches. Marcus Ankney will check in. He's been battling some injury problems. And Cademan Bontrager, the redshirt freshman out of Leo High School, will come into the game as well. 
That name, Bontrager sounds familiar. M gave fits to both Marion and St. Joe over the years in semi-state when playing for Leah. Cleaver drives and lays it off the glass for two. Griffin Cleaver, as Anj mentioned, had a huge game against Bethel last year on 46, scoring 33 in this arena. He averages 15 a game. The pride of Lee's Summit, Missouri. And a whistle and a foul called against Indiana Wesleyan. Away from the ball. It's going on Marcus Ankney, his first, and the second on the Wildcats. Bethel is a team that traditionally takes pretty good care of the basketball. But both these teams have been a little sloppy in the early going. Clay Hilliard checking into the game now. The grad student out of Plymouth, the transfer from Mount Vernon Nazarene. And they're hoping he can give them a little bit of a boost from three-point range. He had 20 against Huntington on Wednesday. Nice spin move by Jefferson, but Bontrager erases it, and the Wildcats are on the run. Ankney lays it in for two. Tied at six. Ankney, a usual starter for Indiana Wesleyan, battle back, battling back from an injury and getting in early here as the first guy off the bench. Anderson with the rebound of the Phillips miss. And Big James has four already. Now Cleaver, boy, he's got a burst of speed to him and a nice head and shoulder fake for two. He busted some moves there. Two teams settling in now after those early turnovers. Three turnovers apiece, but both of those in the first really three minutes of the contest. Last couple minutes have been clean. One thing we feel pretty certain about, not going to be a defensive battle today. Two very high-powered offenses. Hilliard had his shot tipped, but look who's there again. Anderson couldn't lay it in. Jefferson will. Bethel doing a great job on the offensive glass in the early going. Pilots have five offensive rebounds here in the first six minutes compared to zero for Indiana Wesley. Ankney short on the three. Phillips another rebound. Lutz takes it down the lane, kicks it back outside. They work it around with good ball movement to Anderson, but he's going to try to spin on Bontrager and threw it away. And a whistle and a foul called on Preston Phillips. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout. 13.39 to go, first half. Pilots lead Indiana Wesleyan by two, thanks in part to the work of Trent Edwards on both defense and offense. You're watching Pilot Basketball on 46. been a little sloppy start for Bethel and that is uncharacteristic because typically Steve Draven's team takes very good care of the basketball. They are 11th in all of NAIA basketball and the fewest turnovers per game at just over 10, but they have four already? Four turnovers already in the first six minutes and 21 seconds of this game. Meanwhile, Wesleyan themselves has three turnovers, so it hasn't been the most clean, but as I mentioned kind of at the end of the previous sequence before we went to commercial break, Maybe both teams starting to get a little cleaner outside of that last turnover from Bethel. So a 10-8 lead for Steve Draven's squad as you look into that Bethel huddle. And of course, both Steve and Greg Tonigal, graduates of Laporte High School, separated by about three years in school. So Steve, an outstanding free throw shooter. In fact, he was a state leader. He, he broke the career free throw percentage mark for high school basketball when he was at LaPorte and was an Indiana All-Star. But as I recall from Greg's game back in the day, he wasn't too shabby at the foul stripe <laughs> either. Well, when they were talking free game, I snapped the photo of the two and Greg goes, how do I look so much older than him? <laughs> Besides the fact that he is older, he's been a head coach a lot longer and that, that does play a factor. That'll do it as well as Cape and Bontrager gets the layup and we're tied at 10. Conigal in his 19th season has been fantastic 
in his time, 517 wins at Indiana Wesley. Hilliard for three after Anderson missed the layup, but managed to keep the possession alive. And again, Bethel really dominating right now in the offensive glass. That's one of the early storylines in this game. DJ Moore checked in during the last timeout. And there's Buchanan, who's been relatively quiet in the early going. Edwards trying to lock him up. Shot clock to single digits. Buchanan step back three. Oh, boy. Wow. Javen Buchanan with his 21st three-pointer of the season. Well, he just shows he can do a little bit of everything, right? He obviously can go inside, and they're showing that outside flavor as well. And a big presence on the defensive side of the ball as well. Here's Lutz kicking it down to Nathan Ertz. Back to Lutz for the foul line jumper that rattles home. And maybe that'll get through Lutz going. Mid-range game is usually not one of the things you look for from him, but he provides it there to put the Pilots back on top. Bontrager working hard inside, and Childress was there with the follow. Great cleanup, and you hear it from our great crew right there with the mics on the backboards. Lutz to Edwards outside. Now it's Anderson down on the block. Couldn't get it to go, and the rebound comes to Buchanan. Wildcats looking for their first lead, and Buchanan too strong on the three, but DJ Moore kept it alive. Ankney drives in, and is fouled by Hilliard. You get another look on the 46 sports replay. Second chance baskets have been big for both teams today. Only the second offensive rebound for Indiana Wesleyan so far. Meanwhile, Bethel has six. The Pilots had a strong edge early on in rebounding. Right now, 10-6 in favor of Bethel. Marcus Ankney is a freshman out of Center Grove High School. He lives in Greenwood, Indiana. Been a pretty good three-point shooter in his freshman year, but what Greg Conigal really likes about him is his assist-to-turnover ratio has been outstanding, especially when you consider he's a freshman. Well, rattles home the free throw. What's, what is incredibly impressive is how young this Indiana Wesleyan team is and here they are with an 18 and three record and ranked fifth in the country. Here's Lutz protecting the ball. Hilliard, but Ankney closed well on him. And it altered the shot for Hilliard. Wildcats come the other way with the lead. DJ Moore trying to go to work on Drew Lutz. And Lutz potting him up and Moore gets the bucket of the up. So the redshirt sophomore, D.J. Moore, the transfer from Liberty University, will look for the old-fashioned three-point play. As Lutz slid right into him. Moore, a 75% foul shooter. So the Wildcats on a 6-0 run here take a four-point lead. Edwards with a great spin move, bucket in the box. And Trent Edwards off to a great start today. You know, he only averages six and a half points a game. He's already got six, thanks to plays like this. Beautiful spin move in the paint, finishing it off, getting the foul and a chance for the three-point play now. It's his third big play of the game so far here in the early going for the Pilots. He's been a big spark with less shooting abilities, not at the level they usually are. It's been Trent Edwards picking up the slack. But the free throw rattles out. Ankney picked up his second foul, so he checks out. Nolan Mater back in for Wesleyan. And that's Mater in the corner. Now DJ Moore slashing to the basket, but wild shot. Bon Traeger, the rebound is good. Lots of balanced scoring between the two teams. Midway through the first half, each team has had six different players score. And a offensive foul called on Bethel. Jimmy 
here. Jefferson checking back in, and we'll also say Big Eye Gume come into the lineup for the first time today, a 6'6 grad student from Dallas. Giving James Anderson a break, so we'll see if Bethel's bench can provide a spark here midway through the first half, trailing by four. Wild pass, but Griffin Cleaver whips it down to Childress for two. And it has been terrific balance for Indiana Wesleyan so far as well. Six different players have scored. A steal here by Cleaver, the pull up three. Too strong, Bontrager pushed off to get that position. So Cademan Bontrager called for the foul, and we've got an official's timeout with 9.43 to go here in the first half. Earlier before the game, Angelo DiCarlo had a chance to talk with the head coach of the Pilots, Steve Draven, about what makes his program special. And one of the things that we commented on last week in this, when they took on Goshen, is the fact that Bethel has so many local players that you're familiar with through the 46th game of the week, and Steve Draven talked about that with Ange. Yeah. It's important, you know, me being a local guy myself and from Indiana, I'm biased, but I think Indiana has the best high school basketball there is. Um, I think a big part of that is because of uh, coaching. I think the coaches in this state and even in this area um, are just really good. Um, they understand the game. Um, the discipline is there. They teach the game, um, you know, from a, you know, old school perspective. And um, guys that come out of programs in the state of Indiana know how to play and have a high basketball IQ. And uh, we want to recruit guys like that. We've got 10 out of 14 guys from Indiana. Um, so, you know, it's great to have guys that have been coached well uh, from winning programs, uh, most of them. And, um, and then, you know, it's, it's nice having families here and friends. And um, so, yeah, we want to continue to, we start local. That's where we start. And then we kind of branch out from there, trying to find the best fit for our program and our school. And that's been a key for them is growing local in his time. When he took over, they were down to just four players on the roster. So what better way to rebuild your program than to get the guys, the best guys from the local area as best as you can. But there's a lot of competition, right? Indiana Wesleyan's gonna come out and try to pick off some players. Certainly Grace is having a great, has a great program and they've been having some players, but they wanna keep the best, led by getting that guy back, Drew Lutz back in town. And Lutz took the shot, but there was no call to rebound, a one-armed rebound by Nathan Harris as he held off Childress. Lutz cool. still shaking that one off. Looks like he got kind of hit in the eye maybe a little bit. Lutz outside to Jefferson. He whips it across. Lutz got a step and found an open eight. Nathan Ertz, but he couldn't hit the three. And Noah Smith with the rebound. The speed of Indiana Wesleyan disrupting the shooting of Bethel here in the early going. Cleaver for three. And Griffin Cleaver reigns in his 40th three-pointer of the season. All of a sudden, Indiana Wesleyan up by nine. Here's Luke McBride, the freshman. He has to go outside. Just such length defensively right now for Indiana Wesleyan. Ume spinning, winning with the left. Big Ike with his first basket of the day. He transferred here from Bethel College in Kansas. Childress, oh, nice pass and no one made her, didn't see it coming. It's so, so nice that no one expected it. James Anderson will check back in, so does Cademan Bontrager for Indiana Wesleyan. One of the reasons Indiana Wesleyan has been able to get this lead here in this last five minutes or so has been the lack of offensive rebounds for Bethel. It, they started out with six offensive rebounds in the first five or six minutes. They're still sitting on six offensive rebounds. So those second chance opportunities for the Pilots have not come here in the last few minutes as Bethel, as Iwu, excuse me, has gotten to bigger guys inside. Lutz outside to McBride. He hits the three. That may be the spark the Pilots need. It's certainly created a roar from the Bethel students across the way. Eighth Bethel player to score here in the first half. 
Noah Smith driving. Nice speed to Childress, and he gets hacked in the act by James Anderson. Nathan Childress, a transfer from IU. He only played 17 games in his four years with the Hoosiers, but showing early on that he's got game. He averages 14 and a half points per game. And he has seven already today. McBride comes the other way for the Pilots. Jefferson over to Lutz for three. Too strong. Noah Smith's outlet knocked away by McBride, and he saves it to Eric. What a play. McBride for three. On fire like his red hair. Excellent play by Lutz. He had the ball, he went up in the air, realized it wasn't going to be the best shot, saw McBride open, whipped it out to him, and McBride drains it. Lutz defends well on Cleaver. Jefferson's hurt at the other end. So this is four on four right now. Lutz doesn't care. And it's a one point game. And Jefferson caught either a finger or an elbow in the eye and the whistle blows so that he can come off the floor. And we'll see plenty of subs here. Edwards and Hilliard back in for Bethel, and Kyle Sanders comes into the Iowa lineup for the first time today. Training staff on top of it, getting right. Jefferson looked at on the bench, and hopefully he'll be all right. An 8-0 run for the Pilots here. Childress. Now Sanders double team that left Noah Smith open for three. And Smith makes some pay. He is not known as a marksman, but he is a 43% three point shooter. He just doesn't take a lot of it. That's the seventh Indiana Wesleyan player to score in the first half. Ertz backing down Childress and banks it. Wow, and Anderson tipped it over the back of the back. I don't know how that ball did not go in. <laughs> it seemed to catch everybody flat-footed, and that's why Anderson kind of took a volleyball punch at it. Just hoping it would deflect in the right direction, and unfortunately, it did not and went over. Javen Buchanan will walk it over. The Indian All-Star who only played one year of varsity ball, his senior year at Lafayette Jet. Smith was short, but Bontrager got the rebound. Marcus Anke back outside to Buchanan. Buchanan over Ertz. Good defense by Nathan Ertz that time. Here come the pilots the other way. Edwards left it for Hilliard. And Hilliard needs help. Anderson. Just really good help defense by Indiana Wesley in this sequence, but that left Ertz open for three. His first basket of the game. Bethel back with him one. And a tripping call against Trent Edwards. He had gotten away with a shove just a moment ago. Edwards called for the trip, and we'll take one to a break. 4.57 to go, first half. Dandy here at the Wycamp Center. Indiana Wesleyan with a one-point lead on Bethel, 32-31 on 46. Crossroads League race, a tight one when you look at the top four spots, which are critical for home court when you get into the conference tournament. Race, after that thumping they put on Indiana Wesley on Wednesday night, comfortably ahead by two games. But if Bethel can get this one at home, 
they can put a lot of pressure on the Wildcats down the stretch. Yeah, and in turn, if you are not able to get this win, you still have grace left to play in the second half of the season, and it could put pressure on yourself. So this is a very big one for Bethel, and it can make a big difference in the standings by the end of the year. And also, certainly this is a big one overall speaking. It's a top 20 matchup. You want to get in the conversation in your league, but also in the NAIA talk as well. So 457 to go first half. You see the score, bottom corner of your screen. And the Wildcats will inbound. Pilots now have six fouls, so the next foul Bethel makes will result in free throws. DJ Moore with the drive. Over Hilliard, and Edwards couldn't get over soon enough. Moore has five off the bench. Here's Ertz. They ran a clear out for him, and he took his man to the hole, and that is the third foul on Marcus Ankney. He'll come right out, and Griffin Cleaver will go right in. His third foul, Nathan Ertz headed to the stripe, and he is a 64% free throw shooter. Recently became a 1,000 point scorer, scorer earlier this year. A fine career out of Valpo, Indiana. And I suppose if you're a fan of blackjack, you would appreciate the fact that Nathan Ertz is hitting on 16 these days. He stands 16th on both Bethel's Scoring and rebounding lists all time. Did not add to the total there. Here's more. Now Buchanan, guarded by Edwards. Has a height advantage on Trent. He's going to try to use it here and does. David Buchanan identifying the matchup pretty well right there. Absolutely, and he taking advantage, just backing down his man and getting the height advantage and going in for the bucket. Here's James Anderson, and he uses his big frame to his advantage as the pride of Troy, Ohio, and the transfer from St. Francis gets his sixth point of the evening. Nathan Childress. Working on Nathan Ertz. Childress strong over Ertz but couldn't hit. Anderson a one-handed rebound. McBride has had a hot hand here in the first half, but he gives it to Hilliard nearly from the logo. Steve Draven looks perplexed at the shot selection. That was deep. Buchanan. Kicks it outside. Here's Cleaver for three. We saw a lot of that last year when they came. And he already has 10 this evening. Uh, he likes playing in this gym. 43 points over the last two games here at the White Camp Center. Hilliard has it knocked away from behind. And 43 yeah. points in his last three halves. Yes. Here. Preston Phillips will check back in to take the place of Ertz, and Jameer Jefferson comes in for Edwards. Drew Lutz will replace McBride, so nearly a wholesale substitution here for the Pilots. Cleaver, four of six overall so far in this game to go along with those two three-pointers. Lutz to pull the trigger right in front of the Wildcat bench. Shot clock at six, and Hilliard another deep three that caroms wildly. Cleaver, but we've got a timeout called by Indiana Wesley, and it'll be a full timeout with 2.34 to go. We'll take it as well. 39-33 Wildcats. You're watching Bethel Pilots basketball on 46. The basketball just doesn't stop on the Family Broadcasting Corporation channel. Sunday afternoon on 103.1 FM, the biggest game in the Big Ten so far this year. 
number two Purdue visiting number six Wisconsin. The Badgers smarting after a loss in Nebraska on the road. The Big Ten lead on the line. The place to hear it in Michiana, 103.1 FM, Sunday afternoon at 4. Here, Crossroads League action with Indiana Wesleyan in the red on top of the Bethel Pilots by a count of 39-33. Griffin Cleaver leading the way so far with Wesleyan with 10 points. Meanwhile, three different pilots with six, James Anderson, Trent Edwards, and Luke McBride. What are the shooting numbers like so far for these two teams, huh? 42% for Bethel, 55% from the field for Indiana Wesleyan. The threes have been the interesting story so far. Bethel has made five of 14. Indiana Wesleyan almost made as many with four, but only 10 attempts. And Hilliard's been the one that struggled from three. He's one of five from beyond the arc. Jameer Jefferson looking for help. Hilliard again. Preston Phillips. They're looking to see if he can get going offensively, but he's got to get some help from Lutz here. Lutz with the drive. The circus shot is good. He has seven. At the other end, transition slam for Nathan Childress. Well, he just saw why he was recruited to play at IU. Meanwhile, Cleaver fouls Hilliard from behind. That's the first on Griffin. And the fifth on Indiana Wesleyan. Noah Smith checks in and DJ Moore leaves. After starting the game one of five from the field, Drew Lutz has made his last two shots. The Pilots dearly need him to get going. Hilliard for three. That's off the iron. He's a little bit chilly today as well. One of six now from beyond the arc. Buchanan's pass goes awry. Gift for the pilot. You Turn kind out. of get this feeling that this is a key minute 35 in this game. Well, certainly. A six point lead right now, two possession. Depending on what happens, this could be anywhere from a two point game at halftime to a 10 point game. You know, things go your way if you're Bethel. You can get two nice possessions here. You get it back down to one possession, and it's anybody's game. You turn it over once or twice, make a bad shot, and all of a sudden, it's a double-digit lead for Wesley in that time. Part of that is good shot selection. Ertz popped open briefly, but Childress closed on him. Hilliard with the Euro step and goes inside. Couldn't make anything happen from outside the arc, so wisely attacks the basket. Well, it also works because you've attempted six threes in the game. You've not attempted a single shot inside the arc, so they're assuming you're just going to throw it up from beyond the arc. You fake it, and you go in. Meanwhile, Childress reigns home of three. He has 12, and Steve Draven will take a quick 30-second timeout with 55.4 seconds. Well, and I think in part because of what we just discussed, right? This is a critical sequence in this game. All of a sudden, you had gotten the lead back down to four. You're feeling pretty good, and then they hit a three. You come down here, you make an errant shot. They come back the other way, and suddenly it's it's not in a good place. They want to go maybe two for one here in the final minute, get a good sequence, drop a good play maybe get the ball in the hands of Lutz and see what they can do. You probably felt pretty good about who you had taking the three down <laughs> there from Indiana Wesleyan as well, but Childress showed a nice stroke. He's a young man from Zionsville, Indiana. And he has 12 points to lead the way for the Wildcats this evening. Well, and he's five of nine from the field, so he's just having a good day overall for the Wildcats. Between him and Cleaver, they've scored half the points for Iowa in this game so far, 22 of the 44. If Bethel's going to get a two for one here, they almost have to get a shot up here in the next five seconds or so. And it, not sure it looks like they're going to do that. Instead, right now, they just want to work for a good shot. Preston Phillips down low. McBride with a step out three. That's what the doctor ordered. The redhead with his third of the first half. It's okay to not get a two for one if you get a three pointer. He's a 41% three point shooter coming in. Greg Tonical signals X from in front of the Iowa bench. And the Wildcats will hold for the last shot, leading by four. 
Crowd getting into this one, trying to pump up the Bethel defense. Bontrager left it for Cleaver. He's got a hurry. It's short. And Phillips from three-quarter court will launch it off the shot clock. An exciting 20 minutes of basketball here at the Y Camp Center in Mishawaka. But Indiana Wesleyan will take a 44-40 lead to the locker room. When we come back, Hans chats with Bethel men's and women's tennis coach Jamal Henry. We'll have that for you next on 46. At halftime here between Bethel and Indiana Wesleyan, joined now by the men's and women's tennis coach of the Bethel Pilots, Jamal Henry, who of course is a South Bend native and played multiple sports in the area. Jamal, what's it like to be back here at Bethel in your second year as the tennis coach? It's great, you know, just to be back in a familiar place where um, where excellence is, is, is a part of the culture. Um, it's outstanding to have been a player and now being able to lead these student athletes on the tennis court is, is awesome. What's your philosophy as a coach? Mine is uh, really give me your all. Give me your all talent. Talent wise, we can work with that. Um, whether you need improvement or whether you just uh, need, you know, kind of a push. But you give me your all and you're a high character. We can work with that all day. Now, if you don't know, this guy is Bethel royalty because he's the only Bethel athlete in the history of the school to win national championships in three different sports tennis, basketball, and baseball. What an unbelievable achievement. How how cool is it to be the only person to ever do that? I mean, it's a great accomplishment, but that's, I mean, that's just credit to uh, great coaches and great teams. You know, I had the privilege of being on some phenomenal teams with some phenomenal players who, um, you know, you talk about great character, but guys uh, that just laid it on the line. Um, when it came down to crunch time and when it came down to just getting the job done, uh, there was nothing that was going to stand in the way of those teams. And, and, you know, and that's kind of those things that I'm trying to filter um, into my players now. Uh, there's going to be distractions. There's going to be different things that are going to try and knock you off course. But if, if you got that goal and, and stay right on that avenue and right on that, that, that track, you know, you can accomplish anything. How did Bethel shape you? Spiritually, it was huge. You know, coming from... Um, Coming from a family, grew up in the church, dad was pastor. Um, um, you know, to be honest, Bethel wasn't on my horizon um, at first. And then about my junior year, Coach Lightfoot came knocking. And, and you know, as you, um, a, as we talked more and I talked with the other, um, you know, Sam Riggleman and, and, um, and Coach Dindu of tennis, uh, you just tried to, you saw the character of, of these guys. And, and spiritually, it was just a matter of, uh, you know, them knowing that they would build my faith and, and having that foundation just, just opens up doors for everything. Jamal, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That's Jamal Henry, the men's and women's tennis coach here at Bethel. Speaking of spirituality and faith, we've got a great story coming up after the break, a mission trip that the Bethel basketball team was a part of. You're watching Bethel Men's Basketball on TV 46. The Elm Road Screaming Eagles jump rope team entertaining the crowd here at the Camp Center, although they've been thoroughly entertained by this first half of basketball that sees Indiana Wesleyan leading Bethel 44-40. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo with the courtside tonight. And interesting first half from the standpoint, there really were spurts and stops. And there wasn't really a great flow to the action. Yeah, the beginning of the game, there were a lot of turnovers. And then they cleaned it up, and then... Bethel had an early advantage early on with a lot of offensive rebounds. And then Wesleyan got back in it in that regard. It was not a game of necessarily runs, maybe a little bit. Indiana Wesleyan got ahead of, by a bit, and then Bethel got back within four here at halftime. So it's been an interesting first half. Let's show you how it got to be this way. Inside the Y Camp Center, Trent Edwards, the Northwood alum, with the steal and the layup here as the Pilots would jump out to a 6-0 lead. Edwards with all kinds of handles here on his way to the hoop. But then Javen Buchanan, the lead scorer of this Indiana Wesleyan team, got warmed up. He had seven in the first half. Drew Lutz with a mid-range jumper here. And then Edwards with a bucket and a bump as 
Bethel was able to maintain the lead at that point, but then Griffin Cleaver started to get hot, and Bethel needed an answer. That would come from Luke McBride, who hit a key three-pointer here. But Cleaver and the Wildcats would open up a nine-point lead in this one. Cleaver had 10 points in the first half. Lutz with the scoop layup here had seven for the Pilots. Nathan Childress leads all scorers so far with 12, but McBride bringing home his third triple of the first half. Keeps the Pilots within four. The shooting percentage is not bad until you get to the foul line. Yeah, Bethel 0 of 3. So I imagine Steve Javen's going to talk to the officials uh, about getting them there a little bit more. But Indiana Wesleyan's only been there five times, so Bethel's got to clean that up a little bit at the free throw line. Rebounding may be the biggest key. It's even at 18. Early on, Bethel had a 10-3 advantage. So Indiana Wesleyan did a really nice job in terms of the rebounding in the second half of that first half. One of the key factors of the Bethel University experience is the chance to evangelize, to share the good news with others. And that's one of the things you've talked about with the pilots. Absolutely. They went on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic during the summer. An outstanding opportunity for not only the players, but the coaches as well. And got a chance to chat with Drew Lutz, the Penn High grad, about what it all meant to him and his teammates. Really awesome. It was just so cool to see how, how God was moving there. Um, just on my own heart and then all my teammates and those kids who just had so much joy and it was such such fun time to be around and just to show that uh, they don't have as much as we do but they're just so joyful and thankful and that actually it helped me with a whole nother level of leadership just to be able to lead guys in prayer and worship and all that so it was, it was really special. <laughs> I've always wanted to use basketball as something bigger than myself. I've, I've always looked up to guys like Tim Tebow and Kirk Cousins, people like that. And just being able to use basketball for something greater than yourself is really something special. And God's given us abilities to play basketball, but um, if we can use it for something bigger than ourselves, I think that's really awesome. And then how has Bethel helped allow that to be a possibility, being such a great faith-based institution? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's expanded my faith a lot and it's challenged me with uh, having to pray for people in situations where maybe I wouldn't in the past and um, just being able to lead guys. And Coach Draven's put me in a lot of situations to where I'll be able to use my faith, whether it's uh, worshiping for our team or praying or just telling different stories. So uh, Bethel's been huge and Coach Draven especially. Second half just about ready to go here at the Y Camp Center on the campus of Bethel University. Indiana Wesleyan leading Bethel 44 40 in this key Crossroads League contest. Steve Draven's team hoping to protect home floor and increase its chances of getting the number two seed for the Crossroads League tournament later this month. Nathan Childress leading the way for. All scorers right now with 12 points. Luke McBride off the bench leading the way for Bethel with nine. There you see Mike Lightfoot, the legend in the house here tonight. What a vest. What a vest he's got going. I was going to say for a while he was showing his best side. Well, <laughs> hey, when your name's on the court, you can wear whatever color vest you want. Maybe it reminds him of one of Jackie's pillows. I don't know. 44-40 <laughs> in favor of the Wildcats who have possession to begin the second half. Javen Buchanan and now Noah Smith handling the ball. It's Buchanan trying to kick it outside but it's deflected out of bounds by Bethel. Buchanan had just five shot attempts in that first half. Three of five from the field for seven points. It was the other bigs, Childress and Cleaver, that really got the job done for Indiana Wesleyan in that first half, and it's Childress working on Preston Phillips here. Baseline jumper, no good. Rebound, James Anderson. Steve Draven wants his team to come up the floor in a hurry. Trent Edwards had a nice first half. 
shown some pretty good handles here, but now needs some help. Good defense there by the Wildcats. Edwards around Childress and draws the foul. It'll be called on Griffin Cleaver and will send Trent Edwards to the line for the second time tonight. Well, we highlighted the lack of free throws made for Bethel in that first half. And now less than a minute into the second half, they get a chance to get a first made free throw here tonight. 0 for 3 from the charity strike heading into this attempt for Edwards. Edwards has really emerged into becoming a vocal leader, and Steve Draven says he's like having a coach on the floor right now. 6'4", senior out of Northwood High School, as respected, really, as anyone on this team, and that's saying a lot when you got a guy like Drew Lutz on the roster, too. One of two at the stripe. Here's Buchanan all the way with the layup. And Javen now has nine. I think I'd get the ball in his hands a little bit more here because now four of six from the field, he just seems to, not only has he made four shots, but it seems like it's coming with ease every time he's attempting it. He's just got such tremendous athleticism. Cleaver, what a nice spin move, but it left the shot short. And here's Watts coming the other way for the Pilots. Kicks it outside, Ertz for three. Yes, sir. He caught it in rhythm, and boy, does that make a difference. Second triple of the game for Ertz. Childress down the baseline. And Indiana Wesleyan will reset. Smith, topside triple, off the mark. Lutz and the Pilots with a chance to tie or take the lead with this possession. Anderson, big fella, lays it in. Eight for James, and we're not at, at 46 on 46. Childress topside. That's good. Back-to-back -back threes on his scorecard. Give him 15 points for the night to lead all scores. Lutz with a terrific drive as he did the blow by on Ankney, who was looking for some help that never came. Lutz doing a lot of distributing of the basketball for assists, but there he takes it himself. And then the hot hand continuing here for Iwu and Nathan Childress, another trifecta. The 22 year old drills his third three of the night, and the Wildcats take the lead back up to four. See what kind of answer Bethel has here. Anderson trying to back his man down. Edwards, nice square up of the shoulders that time to go over Cleaver and Trent with nine today. Well, you mentioned earlier, I'm not sure this will be a defensive battle in the last few possessions. Neither team has been able to miss. But here's a turnover. Bethel trying to tie it up again. Lutz couldn't get it to go. Childress the rebound. Good sportsmanship at the other end as Cleaver gets the lay in. Buchanan helping Lutz up, and Lutz is hobbling in front of the Bethel bench. They're not going to stop play. He's going to stay in there. Edwards misses the high layup. Buchanan has this team in transition right now and gets it to go despite. Contact from Erickson, a near block by Edwards, and Steve Draven doesn't like the way things are going. He'll take a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. You know, Bethel is not playing poorly offensively here to start the second half, and yet the lead for Iwu has increased because, well, they're playing even better than Bethel is on the offensive side of the ball right now, so they have extended this lead to 56-50 here with 6-16 to play in the game. Reminder, we go back to the high school hardwood Friday night for what my partner likes to call the Holy War of the Hardwood. Marion and St. Joseph renew that very intense rivalry Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9 on your home for high school sports, TV 46. Two of the hottest teams in the area right now, both on big win streaks and potentially on even bigger win streaks by the time we get to that game Friday night. Marion winning again today, beating Career Academy, and that is their sixth straight victory. Meanwhile, St. Joe has won five in a row. They'll face Glenn on Tuesday. Marion's got Jimtown and Glenn still to come midweek next week, so potentially Marion could be on an eight-game win streak, and 
St. Joe on a six game win streak for that contest. Meanwhile, here at the Gates Gymnasium, Indiana Wesleyan with a six point lead on Bethel. The pilots had tied it at 46. But after a, an attempt at a game time layup by Drew Lutz that resulted in no contact or, or no foul, I should say, there was plenty of contact. Indiana Wesleyan with a little 4-0 run to open things up here. Lutz, well, he shows no ill effects in terms of his speed or with the left hand. Just needed a moment to shake it off. Well, he might have actually been better off coming out of the game when he went down just because he maybe needed a second to shake it off, but obviously he's okay. It was just a matter of the fact that he just hit the floor so hard. Nate Childress actually missed a three. Edwards feeds Anderson, and the big man takes it up for two more. He's in double figures again today with 10, right around his average. I mean, that's a fantastic job. It was great defense, and Anderson was just muscling his way. And then on the other end, Bontrager getting the big bucket. The transition game for Greg Tonegal's team, very strong as usual. That's one of the reasons that they average 89 points a game. Lutz in strong and draws the foul from Noah Smith. Now in an area of strength for Drew Lutz, but not an area of strength for Bethel so far here tonight to the free throw line. The pilots are one of five from the free throw line. You would think if anybody were going to be able to solve it, it would be the 89% free throw shooter Lutz, who now has 12 points in the contest. Ume and Jefferson and Hilliard and McBride all check in for the pilots. McBride's going to take Lutz's spot if he hits the free throw. We'll see if McBride still has the hot hand after those three triples in the first half. Not even Lutz can hit two in a row for the pilots. Undraven like. Buchanan kind of got out of control, but he's going to get a bailout call here on the foul. And it's going to be called on Jameer Jefferson, his first. McBride takes the place of Lutz, who goes to the bench temporarily with 12 points. Childress, 18 points on the evening. D.J. Moore is the one slashing to the basket. And a foul called on Clay Hilliard. Steve Draven was pointing to the floor like he had his feet set and thought they had the charge. Instead, they call a two-shot foul here, even though the contact against Hilliard was... Uh, actually, well I apologize. He's pointing to the floor saying that shouldn't be free throws. It was a foul on the floor. So 14.56 to go in this one. Indiana Wesleyan headed to the line, leading by three. 58.55 on TV 46. Steve Draven not happy at all with, it's not the fact that a foul was called here, it's the fact that Indiana Wesleyan's getting two shots at Yeah, him. you take a look at the replay again. You just don't know how you call the continuation on that one. Draven saying, hey, it's a foul on the floor, and it looks like it was there on the replay. Obviously, the, the officials don't have the benefit of seeing the replay, right, in that situation. They're calling it in elite real time, but maybe uh, Steve Draven and us had the better angle on that one in terms of the officiating, but now that gives... The Wildcats a chance to go to the free throw line where they are three of five here tonight. And the story has been both teams really not being great at the free throw line. But now the first free throw going in there for DJ Moore. 75% foul shooter on the year as a team. Indiana Wesleyan shoots 76%. So that's normally a stronghold for them. And they have built a five point lead. Well, and now with those two free throws, they're at 71%. And that has been the difference in this game. They're five of seven from the free throw line, and Bethel is two of seven. We got a lot of contact underneath, and I think a holding call is going to be made here on Buchanan. And for Javen, that'll be his first. Double, 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 double,
And perhaps here the assistant coaches from Indiana Wesleyan calling out the defense because they identified the play they thought Bethel was going to run. Great scouting happens with both these staffs. Buchanan with the reach over and is called for the foul. He held on to Phillips to keep him from moving and then used that leverage to go get the ball. Fourth team foul now against Iwu. Only but two so far here in the half for Bethel. But again, that's only an advantage if you wind up hitting the free throws that you eventually <laughs> get. Jameer Jefferson with the basketball. He's been quiet offensively today. That fella has not been. Luke McBride, but they haven't been able to spring him here in the second half. That could be one of the adjustments they made. Don't let him get an open look. Ume couldn't hit the layup underneath, and Cleaver in transition gets two more. Indiana Wesleyan has really taken advantage of Bethel's transition defense this evening. McBride allowed him to get behind him, and Cleaver took advantage. Jefferson. Now McBride. Bethel just trying to find some offense without Lutz on the floor. Hilliard will take one, can't get it to go. And here come the Wildcats in transition, but McBride with a steal there, and Bethel has numbers. McBride trying to work on Buchanan, who defended him well. Ume was fouled on the way up. No, he traveled. And that will get a roar from the faithful here at the Y camp. Take a look at the sequence. McBride with the steal. Goes in. Dumps it off. Yeah, he took that little bunny hop. Caught the pass, then leaped both feet forward. That would have been considered not even one step in the NBA. <laughs> well, we had that conversation on the high school game last night. Here's Childress. Trying to leave it off, it pinballs around, still loose, it goes off Jefferson and out of bounds. Eight on the shot clock for the Wildcats. They're gonna go to nine on the shot clock here, they're gonna adjust this up to nine. Greg Tonigal lobbying for 10, the official will go nine. I think Greg will take that compromise. It doesn't look like he'll take that compromise. Well, he doesn't have much choice. <laughs> and Greg Tonical saying to the officials, it just means you looked a second late. And they both had a nice laugh. Fair enough. DJ Moore, now Cleaver. They go down low, Bontrager was bumped by Ume in a foul. And Steve Draven wants the travel call against Indiana Wesleyan that was made on Ume at the other end, and he has a point because every day he's shuffling right there. Uh, that would have even been called in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> Von Traeger rolls home the first one. Well, this second half has been the story of a lot of the little things, those 50-50 situations going Iwu's way, and that's the way it works. Right, we know that's the way it works. It's just, it feels like the last few minutes have been exactly that. The little situations going away. And, and going they're hitting their free throws. Yeah. yeah. Well, but case in point, that first free throw. <laughs> first set of free throws they probably shouldn't have had. Actually, you can make a case they shouldn't have had that set of free throws because of the travel. Yeah, and that first one, even when he got it, it rimmed around a couple times before it dropped in, so. Interesting sequence. Lutz with a series of moves to get free for two. He has 14. But Bethel with some catching up to do, down seven. More. A lot of contact there, nothing called. Now Cleaver. He goes inside for two. And again, the fans wanted a travel call there, so did Steve Draven. Let's 
Lutz has struggled on the outside shot, but inside the threes, five of seven here today. Jefferson used his shoulder to get loose and puts in two over Cleaver. The problem for Bethel right now is they're trading baskets with Iowa. And a whistle. And what do we have? Help Jeff ball. Yep. Alternating possession will go to Bethel. And that felt like a about time situation for Bethel to get one of those 50-50 situations go their way, as we said. So let's see if the Pilots can take advantage of the turnover on Indiana Wesleyan. Full court pressure being applied here by the Wildcats and Lutz will bring it across with some help from McBride. Lutz driving, contact, couldn't get it to go. They call the foul on DJ Moore. Lutz, again, inside the arc, has been an advantage here for Bethel, especially in the second half. And now an opportunity to hopefully, for Drew Lutz, get things going at the free throw line for the Pilots. He plays so many minutes, you wonder if at this point of the season it's taking a toll on his legs somewhat, and you need the legs to take the three-point shots that he takes. But Bethel, another free throw missed. And that is one of the stories that has emerged in this game tonight. Now two of eight, and Lutz, an 89% free throw shooter, one of three. Hits that one, he's got 15. Six point lead. Cleaver, what a catch along the sideline. Jefferson almost took out the entire Iowa bench. And then Bontrager gets the bucket of a bump as he head faked Jefferson into the air. And Cademan Bontrager will go to the line for the old fashioned three point play. Let's take a look at the replay here. Nice dump off underneath. Good, good job by Bontrager just waiting. And Jefferson biting, gets the contact, makes the bucket, gets the foul, and hits the free throw. Bontrager leads the NAIA in points per possession, and he just picked up three and one that time. Lutz serpentines his way through and finds the open man. Anderson thwarted the first time, not the second. Steve Draven telling his defense, you've got to get back quick because Indiana Wesleyan will race you up and down the floor. And a moving screen called on Iwu. It'll be on Cleaver. Perhaps watching too many Kansas City Chiefs games because he just had an open field block right there. And we've got a timeout on the floor taken by Indiana Wesley, and we'll keep it here. And it gives us a chance to hear once again from the Bethel head coach, Steve Draven, who chatted with Angelo DiCarlo about why Steve coaches. For me, why I coach, um, I want to develop young men and um, help them become you know, fathers and husbands down the road that will not only accomplish great things in life, but will impact um, others for, uh, for the kingdom. Um, you know, Jesus Christ being number one in our lives and um, helping guys wherever they're at in their journey. Um, they don't have to be Christians to come here, but wherever they're at, helping them grow from there. Um, and then, you know, I always had my eye on this league, uh, being from Indiana, close by. Um, you know, Greg Tonegal and Scott Hetty, good, good friends of mine, and um, seeing how they run their programs, and I, I love this level. So I always had my eye in this league because of the Christian aspect of it, um, and the type of players you can recruit here, the mission um, of Bethel, trying to help students grow in their, their spiritual lives, um, and then, you know, loving the game of basketball and, and being in a great state um, where basketball is um, appreciated and, 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 and loved. So, yeah, that's kind of who I am as a coach and uh, why, why I wanted Bethel. And he's done a wonderful job here with the Pilots. Jameer Jefferson couldn't hit the three. Anderson almost had the rebound but couldn't control it. It's been that kind of evening for the Pilots. Bontrager working against Anderson. Couldn't score. Bethel gets another crack at Putting a dent in a seven point deficit. Lutz wouldn't go. Jefferson, no. 
again Jefferson and this time he's fouled. Those are two difficult shot attempts by both Lutz and Jefferson. And then now Jefferson will go to the free throw line, but it's a lot in traffic there. But great effort there to get those rebounds and the offensive rebounds for Jameer Jefferson there. And again, Jameer Jefferson is only a 32% free throw shooter on the season. He's had a good offensive burst the last couple of games. And in this game of opposites, I was going to say, it might be Bizarro World, <laughs> and maybe Jameer will hit both here. Jefferson hits the first at least as Preston Phillips takes the place of Luke McBride. Well, if Jameer can hit this, he, he might be able to say, hey, Drew, I, I shot better from the free throw line than you did tonight. Jameer out of Memphis, Tennessee, a transfer from Trinity International, and he, of course he made him both. Five-point game with 10.20 to go. I guess you'll take him whatever way you can get him, right? This Bethel crowd wanting to get into it. Indiana Wesleyan has been able to keep them at bay with moves like that from Noah Smith. Smith, the redshirt senior, averaging seven and a half, has five tonight. Lutz for three. Yes, sir. Four-point game. Smith found Cleaver, and he got the basket and was fouled. Just great court vision that time by Noah Smith to find Griffin Cleaver, who now has 18. And we have a timeout on the floor. We'll take it with 9.48 to go, and Bethel trailing Indiana Wesley in 73-67 on 46. High scoring game, not a surprise when these teams get together. Quite frankly, they're pretty common in the Crossroads League where five of the top 20 scoring offenses in all of NAIA basketball reside. Well, you're seeing it. Bethel scores a basket and you're like, all right, they're cutting into the lead and then boom, opposite end, Iwu gets the answer right back. They have an answer for pretty much every time Bethel has squeezed the lead here in the second half. If you were taking average time of possession, <laughs> uh, Bethel would be far ahead in time of possession tonight, but it's the fact that Indiana Wesleyan in this very difficult league that's always well represented at the NAI tournament, Greg Tonigal's team able to get up and down the floor in a hurry. Absolutely, and now a chance to complete the three-point play. The answer after Drew Lutz hitting that three and Lutz starting to get his shot back, six, six of his last eight shots, and then quickly Back the other way came Iwu and Cleaver and it completes the three point play with the free throw and that leads back to seven. 19 points for Griffin Cleaver today. He is the Swiss Army knife of this Indiana Wesleyan team and he plays with fearlessness and it has shown once again here today. Lutz, pull up jumper over Smith, wow. That's why he's one of the nation's leading scorers. He has 20. Now seven of his last nine have gone in for Drew Lutz. Cleaver, blow by on Edwards, and he draws the foul. Edwards says he hooked me. But Cleaver will go back to the charity stripe where he's an 81% free throw shooter. You get another look, and you could see Cleaver seize the wrist of Edwards on the way by. Edwards protesting, of course. That's a crafty move by Griffin Cleaver out of Lee's Summit, Missouri. He had a season-high 25 against St. Francis, and he has 21 here tonight with 9.19 to go. Bethel has just not been able to get any closer. It was tied at 46 all. And then this latest spurt, they have not been able to get any closer than four. Whistle on the floor. Might have been a problem with the shot clock, not sure. They didn't change anything there, so not entirely sure what the issue was. But we're back to play. Lutz going against Noah Smith. Found himself open, but airballed it. 
And we've got a holding foul called on Noah Smith. <laughs> James Anderson's trying to say, I was shooting, and indeed he's going to the line anyway because that's eight fouls on the Wildcats. Although James Anderson only a 53% free throw shooter, but it's the game of opposites, as you said. Bizarro world today at the free throw line for Bethel. We just had a 32% foul shooter for Bethel, hit two in a row. Let's see what Anderson can do here. Young man out of Troy, Ohio. Steve Draven discovered him and that he was available as he was coaching AAU ball last summer. As Anderson was. Anderson was coaching AAU ball. And Steve talked to him and he said, yeah, I'd like to still play, but I haven't found anybody. And Draven brought him here to Bethel and a 14 point day for James Anderson. Pulls the Pilots back within five. But can they get a stop that they need to help them get over the hump? Buchanan, pull up jumper from 15 is pure. And Javen with 13. You mentioned this before, it just looks so easy for Indiana Wesleyan when they're on offense, and it looks difficult for Bethel. Ertz, though, with a wide open three, there was nothing difficult about that. His third three of the day. And the Pilots continue to chisel away. But this possession is the one that counts. Can they get an opportunity to get it to one possession? And the answer is no, because Childress, with the left hand, now has 20. The back-to-back -back stops have been the problem. To be honest, neither team really racking up a whole lot of stops here in the second no. half. Well, yeah, and it was a four-point lead, and now it's a six-point lead. Preston Phillips working hard for the offensive rebound, and Ertz just a little short on the three. A read by Edwards. He'll challenge Childress. Phillips missed the dunk attempt on the rebound. And Edwards called for a foul. Opportunities galore for the Pilots. They couldn't cash them well, out. Well, let's take a look at this. This is going to be a sequence that is just going to drive Bethel crazy that they came away with nothing here. And then not to mention the foul that sends the Wildcats to the free throw line where they are 8 of 10 from the charity stripe here tonight. Whereas Edwards is saying, what about all the contact down there when I'm trying to take the layup? Cleavers 3 of 3 from the free throw line. Cleaver having another monster day here. The team leader and assistant steals coming in, but he missed that one. Ball don't lie. Eighty seventy four. Lutz. A lot of contact there. No I ball. thought he might throw up the three and hope for the four point play for a second. Edwards. Couldn't get the floater to go. Childress with those long arms starts the transition offense. Smith for two. Well, that was a fabulous job by Smith on the pump fake, avoiding the travel, going in for the easier lay-in rather than the outside shot. Lutz from Granger couldn't hit, but Edwards is there for the rebound. And a timeout called by Bethel. We'll keep it here with 6.58 to go as it's a 30-second timeout. And Edwards needed that one, right? After the last couple sequences, he's had some good looks, and they've just come off. They, you know, just missing. So you need a bucket there. They get it. And here we are, still a six-point game. This swing between four and seven points has been pretty much the story in the second half as you take a look at this one. Let's missing the three. Edwards doing the dirty work inside for the bucket and the putback. And let's face it, it was the offensive rebound early in this game that was Bethel's bread and butter. They were living off those second chance points. They get another second chance point here. Well, but defensively, they've got to find a way to get some stops. Offensive rebounds this is still the thing that is keeping them in this game because they they have 11 offensive rebounds. Wesleyan just has four here here tonight, but it's it's evened out overall. They're about even overall. It's just that 
West Dean's making more shots, right? And that's been the difference here in this game. Yeah, what is the shooting percentage for Wesleyan? Because it sure doesn't seem like they miss a lot. They're up to 62% from the field in the game. 32 of 52. Bethel is 30 of 61. So Bethel has put up nine more shots here and have made two less. You shoot 62%, you're gonna look pretty good. And then of course, we talked about the free throw line. Indiana Wesleyan 11 of 14, Bethel now 7 of 13. They've obviously improved greatly there, making their last four attempts. Childress over Anderson as they continue to just attack the basket. Childress now with 22. We mentioned earlier, Indiana Wesleyan has been over the century mark five times this season, and they're trying to get to number six. Ertz with a smart foul there, or else it's a breakaway. You might as well take a chance that Buchanan might miss a free throw. Well, it felt like it was giving me a four-on-one advantage down the other end of the court. Let's got himself in a tough spot. It's a, usually a spot he's able to get himself out of. He's up in the air, and then he's trying to find an open man, and he throws it into, unfortunately, an Iwu player in a turnover. Javen Buchanan at the foul line, hits the first. He has 14 today. He was on the Crossroads League All-Freshman team a year ago, and... Greg Donegal says the sky is the limit for this young man. He has had another terrific season. Turnovers, 10 for Indiana Wesleyan, eight for Bethel. Both teams settled down after that early start where they had three apiece in the first three minutes. Again, the story's simply been the shooting. Iwu has just shot the ball better than Bethel here so far this afternoon. And Wesleyan with its biggest lead of the contest. And another ill-timed turnover for the Pilots. Childress stripped away by Ertz. Now it's Bethel with numbers. Anderson couldn't complete the catch. Buchanan, the lob to Bosberger for two. That last sequence, a tough one for Bethel. It just feels like they're... They're feeling like they got to score. They got to score, and they're forcing it the last couple of possessions. You can see the anxiety. Here's Hilliard with a three with a hand right in his face. And now Indiana Wesleyan races the other way, and Bontrager with another easy lay-in. He has 15. And wow, look at the scoreboard. Suddenly, I was up by 14. And this is the explosiveness that this Wildcat team has displayed throughout the season. A bad pass intended for Ertz, but it's knocked out of bounds by Marcus Anthony. Luke McBride will come in to try to give Bethel another shooter, and Hilliard will check out. Tough day for Clay. Lutz. Makes the catch, and a whistle as there's a problem with the shot clock. It should be at eight, and they change it to that, and Preston Phillips will come in to take the place of Trent Edwards. With 8.35 left in the game, it was 78-74. And since then, a 12-2 run over the last three and a half minutes for Iowa. Ertz over Childress, who defended him well. Shot clock was expiring. Indiana Wesleyan coming the other way. Buchanan, wide open Noah Smith for three. Wouldn't go. And here come the Pilots the other way. Down by 14 with 4.45 to go in this one. Ertz. That wouldn't go either. Could perhaps hear Greg Tonigo encouraging his team to get down low, get to the rim. He wants to continue to attack, and Ankney misses, but an offensive rebound here for Childress goes in. Childress now with 24. And Bethel, meanwhile, has just gotten pulled from the field here in the last four minutes. A four point game has erupted to 16. McBride on the baseline finally gets one to go. He's in double figures with 11, his fifth game in double figures this season. And now 
Indiana Wesleyan will change its tact a little bit and take a timeout with 3.53 to go. And we will take it as well. Bethel needs a comeback. They trail by 14 to Indiana Wesleyan on 46. Chuck Grimmie, Angelo DiCarlo back with you at the White Camp Center. 92-78 in favor of Indiana Wesleyan as the Wildcats looking for their 19th win of the season. Bethel trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses this week. They fell to Huntington on the road Wednesday night, 83-81. Coming back home, had all kinds of hope, and they were hanging with the Wildcats for really about, oh, 32 minutes or so. And then in these last four minutes, things have really opened up. 14-2 run for Iwu. It was 78-74 with eight and a half to play or so. In the last four and a half minutes, a 14-2 run for the Wildcats has opened this game up. Noah Smith gets open on the baseline. Couldn't score, but Caitlin Bontrager is there to tip it in. Or excuse me. That was Javen Buchanan, my apologies. Buchanan now is 17. Preston Phillips has not scored today. Jameer Jefferson with a nice move down the baseline for two. Jameer with eight off the bench. The freshman continues to show some offensive improvement for the Pilots. Cleaver with the lob. Bontrager couldn't put it in, but Cleaver just rips it away from Hilliard. And Greg Tonigal wants to run some time off the clock here. Yeah, at this point, three minutes left, 14-point lead. There's no need to, to rush off a shot too quickly. Cleaver with a little heat check. Bontrager went over the back of Hilliard. There was no call. It's been that kind of day for the Pilots. I mean, Indiana Wesleyan has shot it incredibly well, including that one for Buchanan. Hitting at about a 60% clip today. So give credit where credit is due. They don't need Jefferson. any help, though. <laughs> but they are. Childress poked away. Jefferson will try to lead the break here. And Jameer... Lost the handle out of bounds. It'll go back to Indiana Wesley. James Anderson will check in for the Pilots. And Bethel will take a timeout here with 2.12 to go, and we'll keep it here. Yeah, the, the shooting again has been the story of this game. Indiana Wesley in 60% from the field. Bethel 50% from the field. The threes have been the advantage for Bethel. They're 9 of 25, while Wesleyan is 7 of 18. And as we've talked about throughout the game, the difference has really been at the free throw line, where Wesleyan is 13 of 16 from the charity stripe. Bethel just 7 of 13. Reminder, more college basketball on the radio Sunday afternoon. The biggest game of the year on the Big Ten will be played in Madison as number two Purdue visits number six Wisconsin with the Big Ten lead on the line. Rob Blackman will have the call for you on 103.1 FM, pregame at 3, and the tip-off at 4. The only place you can hear that game in Michigan, 103.1 FM, Pulse FM. Great crowd on hand here today. As we mentioned last week, if you've never been out to a Bethel basketball game, always great to come out here and, and see some fantastic college basketball players. In fact, evidence how many high school coaches I've seen in the gym here today. Just saw Eric Gap, the St. Joe coach, walk out. Alex Daniel from Riley has been here. Barrett Kuhlman from Penn here tonight. So, who knows? We saw Corey Stoner, the football and baseball coach from Gintown, here last week. So, uh, just about everybody's been in the house here this afternoon watching this game because they want to see good basketball when they're not coaching their games themselves. Well, and you never know what you might be able to learn or or glean from watching some of these great coaches like Greg Tonigal and Steve Graben go at it. 
And Greg's got 517 wins in his Indiana Wesleyan career. And he's 45. Griffin Cleaver and Noah Smith trying to control the action on the outside. And then that gets all the eyes away for Caitlin Bottrager to get the alley-oop done. Bottrager might have been able to pull down the cables on that leap. Lutz is fouled going out of bounds. And again, terrific sportsmanship as Noah Smith helps him up. As you take a look at Alex Daniel there, his Riley team, one of the better teams in the area this year. And Alex was an assistant coach here at Bethel for a while. For seven years before he took over the head coaching job at Riley. And has brought stability to the Riley program, which after the departure of Mark Johnson, went through about five coaches in six years before Daniel has stuck around and has done a great job with that Wildcat program. Drew Lutz looking for his 22nd point of the day and gets it. Trent Edwards will take the place of Clay Hilliard. But a 14-point deficit still looms on the pilots with only a minute 45 to go. Full court pressure here, and Noah Smith will take a timeout. And we'll keep it right here. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Four players in double figures today for Indiana Wesley, and Nathan Childress leading the way with 24. Griffin Cleaver with 21, Javen Buchanan with 19, and Cademan Bontrager with 17. That's a lot of offense right there. And then for the Pilots, you also have five players in double figures. Lux with 22, Anderson with 14, Edwards and McBride with 11, and Jefferson with 10. But three-point shooting, normally a pretty strong suit for Bethel, hasn't been as strong today. And you mentioned the free throw shooting, which has been a big problem. Yeah, I think the free throw shooting has been far bigger of the problem. Three point shooting, nine to 25, hasn't been awful. You probably wanted it to be a little bit higher than that, but it, it hasn't been terrible in that regard. But the, the free throw shooting has been the biggest struggle, certainly. But, you know, they shoot 36% from three. They're right at 36% here today. But the free throw shooting, again, just 60%. And of course, uh, I'm sure Steve Draven will point this out after the game. The biggest problem is your defense, because you gave up at least 98 points, and you might be giving up the century mark, and you just did. So. Well, we talked about how much in that second half where they couldn't get that second consecutive stop to, to reduce the lead from seven to four to maybe get it down to one possession. The problem was, Bethel then stopped making their shots, and Iwu did not. <laughs> I mean, Bethel's on a similar offensive pace to what they were in the first half, but Indiana Wesleyan hit the turbo button here in the second half. Yeah, they just haven't, they just haven't been missing. And they get the bucket of a bump right there as Smith gets the tip in. And he becomes the fifth Wildcat in double figures. see on the pilot replay. Smith out of Hamilton Southeastern High School in Indy. Two-time Crossroads League All-Defensive player. But stepping up the offensive game here today. To your point, Chuck, they were pretty good in the first half. They shot 55% from the field. Second half, Iwu has shot 69% from the field in the second half. But a lot of that is because if you take a look at a shot chart, a lot of those shots will be within two or three feet of the basket. They have found ways to get to the 10. And Bethel just was not solid enough in its inside defense tonight to stop him. Here's Buchanan. Couldn't rain home that three. Offensive rebound for Cleaver. He'll take it back outside. There's only about a three second difference between the game shot and shot clock. Cleaver all the way in, couldn't get the layup. And a foul called underneath on Indiana Wesley. So Bethel going to drop to seven and five in Crossroads League play, and now comes a critical stretch for them as they, as we talked about, you know, win gets them right into the hunt 
to maybe get up to second place in the Crossroads League, but a loss, you don't want to drop out of that top four. St. Francis comes in here Wednesday night to take on the Pilots. That's a 7.30 tip-off. Then they go to Mount Vernon Nazarene. But there are no off nights in the Crossroads League. Even those teams that are towards the bottom of the standings, like Spring Arbor and, and Mount Vernon, provide you with a challenge. Absolutely. And, you know, Marion, they still got Marion and St. Francis. Both of those teams are five and six in, in Crossroads League play, mainly because of facing the Iwoos, the Graces, and the Bethels of the world. The coaching staff shake hands at midcourt. The players will soon follow as Indiana Wesleyan downs Bethel tonight by a count of 102.88. We'll wrap it up from the Y Camp Center after this on 46. Indiana Wesleyan secures its grip on second place in the Crossroads League with an impressive road win here at the Wycamp Center today, knocking off Bethel by a count of 102-88. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo with the courtside. Just a, a tough defensive day for the Bethel Pilots. They really had no answer for the transition offense of Indiana Wesleyan especially when you consider the Wildcats shot the ball as well as they did. Yeah, as good as they were in the first half, 55% from the field, which is pretty good. 64% in the second half. Overall, they end up shooting 59% from the field. That doesn't count as well how much of an advantage they had at the free throw line over Bethel here tonight. And when you have two high-powered offenses, generally speaking, the one that shoots really, really well is going to defeat the one that shoots pretty good. So Bethel now falls to 16 and 6 on the year. They're 7 and 5 in Crossroads League play. And they've got a big contest with St. Francis coming up here on Wednesday night. They'd love to see you out at the Y Camp Center. They could use a little boost from the fan base. Absolutely. Two straight losses. Now have an opportunity maybe to get a win streak going. They would love to have that before they head into another rematch with Grace coming up in a few weeks. Indiana Wesleyan wins this one, 102-88. Our thanks to our TV46 crew who helped bring you this one with the killer, Matt Kowalski, leading the way today, producing things with a lot of help from the talented men that we have in that truck that bring you high school and college basketball each and every week. A reminder, college basketball on the radio Sunday as number two Purdue visits number six Wisconsin. We'll have it for you at 103.1 FM with tip-off at 4 p.m. Then back to the high school ranks on the TV side Friday night as Marion and St. Joe renew that intense rivalry. We'll have it for you from Alumni Gym Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the updates on local sports. Now for Angelo DiCarlo, it's Chuck Freeby. Once again, the final, Indiana Wesleyan 102, Bethel 88. So long from the Princess City.